This is a Porsche 986 Boxster. Sleek, curvy, sporty. And this is the Porsche Boxster I bought from the auctions, sight unseen. I bought this for six grand and in good condition, they go for almost 22 to 24 grand. So I think I got an all right deal. Anyway, to get you guys up to speed, over the past few videos, we stripped the car down, replaced the panels that I found on Facebook Marketplace and eBay, replaced the wheel, replaced the headlight, and then painted everything. And now the Porsche Boxster looks like this. Much better than when we bought it. Now the reason for the delayed upload is because we have been waiting for parts from across the world. This little indicator piece right here, I had to buy all the way from America. It was not cheap. And of course, we have also been waiting for the airbags because the collision, of course, set off this airbag right here and that airbag right there. Found this on eBay for $900. That's how much this little airbag costed me. And this airbag hidden right here was a lot cheaper. This one costed me $300, but $900 plus $300, $1,200 for a set of airbags. I did some research this morning and apparently the module can be reset three times. So that means you can blow up the airbags three times before you need to replace the module. However, I am still extremely scared that when I plug them in, they will explode. So I'm gonna get Ollie to do it. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna blow myself up. There's a wire that's connected right here. To remove the driver's side airbag, you first need to turn the wheel 90 degrees, and then you'll be able to access both bolts, which are a T27 Torx bit. We couldn't get enough torque on the bolts, so I did need to use some pliers. Why is it tight so tight, man? And that seemed to do the trick, but it's just like removing an airbag in any other car. Very easy. How do I pull this plug out there? And you're just gonna pick that wire off. Can't be that easy. It's got gold strength, that man. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh, wow. So this airbag I got all the way from America from a left-hand drive car, and I have no idea if it's gonna work or not, but I can't see why it wouldn't. Ollie has just spotted that they have different part numbers. Yep. The reason why I wanted to buy this airbag too is because it has the better logo on the steering wheel. Well, this is the one that we had on the car originally, a silver logo, black and silver, and this one is colored. Much better. I <laughs> 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 look sick, man. No bit, no bit, no bit, no bit, no bit. After that, it was as simple as installing the two bolts holding that airbag on with the T27 Torx bit. And now it was time to do the other airbag. All right, so the next airbag we are going to replace is this airbag. Man, everything on Porsches seems super easy. And apparently, it's literally two bolts that hold this on. <sighs> so there's this little duct that supposedly just pops out. Very nice. And now we should have access to two 10 millimeter bolts. In order to get to the passenger airbag the smart way, you would remove the seat to get more room. But instead I stuffed my head in there and got access to the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the airbag in place. There are two bolts, one there and one there. Just need to get an extension and we should be able to plonk those things out and remove the old airbag. I feel like even on Japanese cars, this would be difficult, but on a Porsche, it's just two bolts. After removing those bolts, the airbag slides out and then you have to disconnect the plug, which is the same on the driver's side. Oh, this one's a bit, oh, hell yeah. Installing the passenger airbag is literally the opposite. You slide the new airbag in, install the two 13 millimeter bolts underneath, and that's literally it. And then it was time to call Porsche for an oil filter. I'm just calling to see if you've got a oil filter in stock. Yep, uh, 98Z. Yeah, there's two different types. Yeah, um, perfect. No worries, thank you. Thanks, bye. Hell yeah, let's go. Look how we made let's go. This please don't explode, please don't explode. Alright guys, we are now at Porsche's parts department. We're just here picking up some oil filters and uh, we're of course blessed with all the uh, McCann's here. So yeah, let's grab an oil filter and yeah, get out of here. Just checking out some of the Porsches near the parts department. I'm trying to manifest hard boys. Hopefully one day we can uh, grab one of these, but yeah, these things are 
very expensive. Look at this beautiful thing. Holy crap. It's a little bit out of the price range, a bit more expensive than the Boxster Boys, but not cheap. We'll get our oil filter now. Ollie's got our oil filter. Hell $50 yeah. $50 later. That was probably the most expensive oil filter that I've ever bought. $50 and how many cents? 85 cents. 85 cents, boys. That's that's a lot of money. So yeah, hopefully one day we're rocking up getting an oil filter for a GT3 RS. <laughs> well, Ollie and I have made it to the showroom. Took off my hat because uh we do not belong here. No, we don't. <laughs> Got a yeah bud who you on? Yeah, I'm wearing cargo pants. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite car of all time is a Porsche 918 Spider. And they have it actually on the wall here. Now, I've only ever seen one of these cars in real life at Duddens, and uh, unfortunately, there's not one that, that's close by, so I can't just come and admire it, but yeah, one day, boys. <laughs> no, it's like a million bucks. All right, we're gonna take our first rip in the Porsche, baby. Let's go. Look at that, man. Thing's flying. <laughs> nah, it's not flying, dude. <laughs> 2.7. 2.7 liter. It's a stepping stone, boys. Stepping stone. <laughs> it's the next day now, and as you can see, the weather is pretty bad and it's raining, and it's been raining all night, and I've been having a few problems with the roof on the Porsche. So every time it's raining, the next morning, there's like fog on the windscreen, which means there is a leak on the roof. And I don't know whether it's to do with the rip in the fabric or if it's to do with drains for the roof. Sunroof cars and convertibles have drains. Uh, they're basically just holes in the body so that the, when the water pulls up, it doesn't go into the cabin. It just goes straight through to the floor. And in order to get to them, we need to put the convertible in what people call service position. So we're gonna just tilt it basically until this clamshell lid comes all the way up. The Porsche is now in service mode. The roof has like come back halfway and this clamshell is all the way up. That's what they call it, the clamshell. So just down in here, there is a little hole for the drain. There you go. You can sort of see that hole just there. And we're gonna just test to see if the drains are blocked. Oh my goodness. Let's pour some water down there and see what happens. Well, looks like wood is coming out of that one. Yeah, interesting. Seems like the sunroof drains are okay, which is a little bit concerning, but these little metal wires that were disconnected, you can see I've just put this one on. I'm gonna put this one on. Looks like someone at Porsche when they serviced this must have forgotten or a private mechanic, not too sure, but that should just click on. Like so, there we go. It was now time to jack the Porsche up to do an oil change. And there isn't a central jacking point on these cars because it seems like not many people would service these cars on the floor and they would use a lift. But because the chassis is so stiff, it lifts up both sides of the car anyway. And then you can place jack stands underneath. I've got the Porsche now jacked up in the air, but we're now gonna quickly do an oil change. We couldn't really figure out what was going on with the roof. Doing an oil change in one of these is literally the same as doing one on a regular car, except there is no dipstick. Actually, there is a dipstick, but the computer measures the level of the oil. Let's go under and see what we need. You do need a special tool to take off the oil filter. I borrowed this from Andrew, the ex-Porsche mechanic. To drain the oil, you need an eight millimeter Allen key socket. Ugh. Oh my God, that's hot. I've never had this happen before, but because this Porsche takes so much oil, I think it's like seven liters or something, it overfilled my drain bucket. So I've had to stop it halfway, but there is a mess under there. God damn it. God. Like I said, I have never once had this problem. The oil bucket is completely filled to the brim. Holy moly, bro. What a mess. Oh my God. Oil filter coming off. There is the oil filter. You sort of just plunk this off apparently. There we go. The drain plug actually has the torque specs ridden on there. So we've got 19 foot pounds for the drain plug, which is super sick. And if you look further in, there's even like a torque spit hole. So you can use a Torx bit if you don't have the Allen key bit. I took the old O-ring off the oil filter housing, replaced it with a new one, filled it up with some oil, installed it, tightened the drain plug, and it was now time to fill the car up with oil. DM me on Instagram if you want the old steering wheel Porsche badge right here on my Instagram. 
Whoa. 20 people who buy a t-shirt, anything actually, anything on the Benki Benki store website, I'm gonna choose an order and put this Porsche badge in it. Follow, like, subscribe my Instagram. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. And buy a t-shirt and send me the receipt of your purchase. Whoa. And I'm gonna select someone and they can get this Porsche badge. <laughs> oh. Oh. If you want this, buy a merch, baby. And I'll be choosing someone in the next 20 purchases. If you guys want to grab some Banky merch, head over to BankySpec.com. We've just released this new t-shirt. I'm currently wearing it. Have a sauce, boys. And of course, if you send your order to Daniel at Daniel.Halu, I'll leave it right here. We will be sending off one of these Porsche badges in the first 20 orders. I'm surprised this is actually made of metal as well. Go head over to BankySpec.com if you want to grab some Porsche t-shirts, Skyline t-shirts, jet tags, air fresheners. Go check them out. And uh, let's continue with putting some oil in this thing, baby. In order to fill the Porsche with the right amount of oil, you need to look at the service manual and it says that you need to fill it up with 7.5 liters of oil. Now the dipstick doesn't really give you a proper reading unless the car is warm. So after putting in 7.5 liters, we let the car run for a little bit. And then on the dash, it tells you what the oil level is. From there, you can drive the car around and then get the right level of oil. <laughs> Airbags installed, oil changed, and now we've got the last final pieces in order to get this Porsche finished. There's two little things that we need to get done. Obviously, this little indicator that I showed you at the start of the video, which I've got somewhere in the garage, and also these grills that we had to take out when painting the bumper, which I've just painted black because the original ones that we got, the silver bumper was silver. So I've just spent this morning painting these. So we're gonna chuck them in and see if I can find this little indicator piece somewhere. Here it is. This is a little driver side indicator piece and this costed me about $120. I could not find this anywhere. No one wanted to sell me this. No wreckers in Australia. So of course we got this from England actually this time. I'm pretty sure we got this from England. Good old British folks. We're gonna chuck this in and uh, yeah, the Porsche should be starting to look pretty complete. Okay, that's a good start. We definitely got the right side. This is a genuine piece as well. Made in Germany. The triangle piece just clicks in place just like so. And then I started to remove the bumper, starting off with the indicator lights on each side of the car. They're just held in by some clips. And then underneath those lights are two self-tapper screws. So I removed those and I didn't have anything else holding in the bumper because I knew that I had to do this anyway after. I then moved the bumper over to the lawn so I didn't scratch it, pushed in both little vent pieces that were painted freshly with black paint, and then the bumper was ready to go in the car. At this point, the car was looking fresh. And now guys, we are completely done with all the new parts on the Porsche. Everything has been installed, all the new parts are on there. We have no other parts that we need to buy. The Porsche is done. Like I said, in terms of parts, we are done. However, we still have some electronical issues to deal with, like the airbag light, which we need to go to Porsche for um, because we don't have the right scan tool or maybe we'll find someone that's got the right scan tool. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, chuck us a like. If you want to see more Porsche content, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Catch you later.